Hello everyone, and welcome to the channel. Today, I will be reviewing the Titanic submersible model produced by Somerville House. This model was introduced in October 1999, and by the early 2000s, it was no longer being manufactured, and it became a rare piece of Titanic memorabilia. The success of James Cameron's 1997 film spurred the creation of many Titanic toys and models, including this one. It originally came with a book by Susan Hughes and Stephen Santini detailing some technical aspects of the ship as well as elements of its history. For a toy, it captures the appearance of Titanic quite well. The shapes of all the deck houses are represented pretty faithfully, and you can see that many details such as cranes, benches, capstans, winches, and vents are present on this model. When you open the box, you'll see that the model is disassembled, but putting it together is very, very simple. You don't need any glue or paint. Um, the hull comes in two pieces, separated between the third and fourth funnels. This is where it was thought the breakup occurred during the real sinking, but it has since been discovered that the breakup actually occurred just behind the compass platform between funnels two and three. But the way that this model is designed is reflective of our knowledge in 1999. And this is how the ship sinks in the movie. The decks are all represented by just two parts. There's one for the bow section and one for the stern. And the only pieces that are separately applied are the masts, the cranes, the lifeboats, but not the collapsible lifeboats, the funnels, the compass tower, um, the docking bridge, and the propellers. Since this is a toy and not a, a real historical replica, I can't really fault it for flaws or inaccuracies, but there are a couple that might be worth pointing out. One of them is the shape of the compass platform. This is what Olympics compass platform looks like. You can see there's this indent right here. This is the uh, first class lounge. And on the Titanic, there was a section of deck on the compass platform that covered that indent. This is what Titanic's actually looks like. But this is a really common issue with many models of the Titanic, even ones that are designed to be historically accurate. The other issue is the four-bladed propellers. This model had all of its propellers as being four-bladed. You can see that I've lost two of mine, but at least two of those propellers should have been three-bladed, and the, the center one probably should be three-bladed as well. But that's information that was discovered well after this kit was being produced, so I, I can't really fault it for that either. You can also see that the piping on the funnels is identical between each funnel, and you can see on this model that there are some variations in the piping, which is correct. These should not all have the same piping. The sinking mechanism is operated by a, a switch on the bottom of the hull. You can see on the left side, there's an image of a broken ship, and right now the switch is oriented in that direction. And when the switch is in that position, there's some iceberg damage that opens up on the starboard side of the hull, which allows water to enter the ship. When that happens, and the hull fills with water, this little lever is pushed upwards. There, there's a part on the inside that's, that's pushed up from the rising water, forcing this part downwards. So we kind of get this rocking motion with that. And when this is pushed down, it releases the stern, causing the breakup. 
All right, here we are with the model and a bathtub full of water. And we can see our iceberg damage. We can see that it is flipped in the sinking position. And we will now see what happens when the ship is put into the water. I now have the ship back in one piece, and you can see that the switch on the bottom has been oriented in the intact position on the right. When the switch is in this position, the damage from the iceberg is sealed. You can see that it's flush with the rest of the hull, so no water can get in. The other thing that happens when the switch is in that position is the mechanism that you saw earlier right here is locked in place so it's unable to pivot and therefore unable to release the stern causing a breakup. So as it is right now the ship is able to float on its own no water will get in there. I will say this model does not float particularly well. I think it's a bit top heavy. There's a, a tendency when this model is in the water for it to lists to one side pretty badly and then what happens is water starts to flood the area uh, in the in the well decks uh, right about here and then the ship ends up sinking anyway but if you're able to find some kind of system to weight the hull a little bit better this model might float uh, all the better for that Thank you so much for watching this review and demonstration of the 1999 Titanic submersible model. This is a really interesting object, and I do have mixed feelings about it because it does depict a very tragic maritime event in toy form. But on the other hand, it introduced many people to the story of the Titanic, and it cultivated an interest in the ship for many young people in the late 90s and early 2000s. And it's also very reflective of the Titanic craze that was going on during that time as a result of James Cameron's film. But regardless, it's a really fascinating and unique toy, and it serves certainly as a great introduction to anybody interested in modeling the RMS Titanic.